How many of you have heard of the word seek? OK, now let me ask you a question. What do you think of when you see this picture? The man has a turban, isn't it? Well, a turban must be worn by Sikhs or those who follow the faith called Sikhism. Today, I will be talking about my own experience of being born into a Sikh family. It's a story of an inner struggle and finding out if my faith really has an outwards or inwards meaning. A story of overcoming societal pressure and convincing my family of finding the real meaning of my faith versus outer symbols associated with my faith. Now, Sikhism is the youngest of the major world religions. About 500 years old, it has some 25 million followers across the globe. The most elemental beliefs of this faith are seeing all human equally, selfless service, and an honest livelihood. Sikhism evolved in times of religious persecution in India. Two of the masters were brutally murdered by the Mughal rulers. Now, the practice of keeping uncut hair, called Kesh, is one of the five Ks, which are the outward symbols ordered by our spiritual master in the year 1699. It was meant to profess the Sikh faith and to distinguish oneself in battle against the Mughal oppressors at the time. Tied up in a knot of hair, it is covered by a turban that keeps one's appearance neat and tidy. So in the year leading up to me cutting my hair, I searched and searched for answers as to why it was given so much of importance to keep long hair and why it was given so much of importance to my parents, my family, and my faith. So some reasons I came across were, firstly, in ancient India, it was a general practice with Hindu sages to keep long hair and a long beard. Secondly, it was a mark of dedication. And, and thirdly, it brought about social equality as men kept long hair, just like women did. Now, none of these really seem to resonate deep enough for me, especially considering that in today's day and age, there are no battles on a battlefield. My parents and the generations before them connected emotionally to this concept of uncut hair with ease. And personally, I was proud of this legacy of my spiritual gurus. But I started to question and ponder over why I could not connect to my creator if I had short hair and no turban. For 13 years of my life, I kept the tradition running of having long hair. However, growing up wearing a turban looking so different to everyone was difficult. Be it at school, where my brother and I happened to be the only boys observing their faith so overtly. Always in the public eye, be it at school functions, theater stage, shopping malls, one stood out when one did not necessarily want to. Going on school trips for a week was an absolute nightmare to think of because that meant that I had to keep my hair tied up in the same turban throughout all that time and not partake in any activity that might loosen the bun. A simple sleepover with friends of mine would stress me, especially if a swim was involved. Now, when you wear a turban, you obviously look different. And because you look different, you tend to be remembered. I got used to the occasional comment like, hey, what's that ball in your head? Anyways, let's go back to when I was a six-year-old kid, going to school with my oversized Mickey Mouse bag. A few boys and I in my class were messing about, and one of them literally pulled my turban off to see what was underneath. I cried until my mother came to school and retied my turban. Another incident I recall was a swimming gala I had at school, in which my hair opened up from under the swimming cap. Not the best of feelings waiting for one's mother to come help you. My parents kept me and my younger brother's hair more to give it a shot and see if we would engage freely in typical activities and sport. 
It was about a year ago that I decided to cut my hair and stop wearing a turban. And the main reason was one thing that I experienced every single day. School. Over the past six years, our school has taken the entire grade on an excursion to another island or country for either two or more days. And whenever we went on these trips, I prayed for my hair not to get wet, only because I didn't know how to, how to tie it back up in a bun and don my turban. Whenever we visited these places, we always used to do a popular activity called snorkeling. And I couldn't do this because of my hair. I was the only one sitting on the hot sand whilst my friends and teachers were probably having the times of their lives. My parents started to understand my anguish of not being able to effectively manage my hair. I guess in our family, this was the first time in all the generations leading up to my dad that the custom of having long hair would be stopped. I remember my dad putting up a brave front to go ahead with cutting my hair, even though he would have a lot of explaining to do to my family back in India. I remember sitting at the barber's chair, looking into the eyes of my parents as I saw them go through a sea of turbulent emotions. Ironically, as I walked out of the barber's shop, I still felt as if all eyes were on me because of my new look. A few months after cutting my hair, I volunteered to shave my head for an event known as Hair for Hope, which was an which was to raise funds for the Children's Cancer Foundation in Singapore. I had seen and heard about it in school and saw my schoolmates do it over the years. Once I did it, it made me feel satisfied in some strange way. Now, while the hardware element of my faith may be somewhat missing now, I feel that I am even more connected in the software or what I feel are the real elements of my faith. Seeing all humans equally, selfless service, and an honest livelihood. It's our inner being, which is a core part of any faith, including Sikhism. So, to conclude, ladies and gentlemen, does faith matter more on the outside or the inside? Thank you.